Avaldis Remisauskas, an ordinary man from Lithuania, stole an outstanding $120 million from Google and Facebook using a classic email phishing scheme. This news might lead you to assume that Remisauskas was an expert hacker or an insider with advanced knowledge of the company's systems. But the truth is that his scheme was not particularly notable, and he was able to deceive some of the world's smartest people and companies. What makes the situation even more astounding is that the companies didn't realize they were being scammed, and Rimanowskis could have gotten away with it if he hadn't gotten greedy rather than simply stealing a large sum of money and retiring. Initially in 2013, Avaldis Rimanowskis stole an enormous amount of $23 million from Google, which was already a substantial sum of money. However, Rimanowskis was not satisfied with the amount and wanted to acquire more wealth. Two years later, he targeted Facebook and managed to steal an additional $98 million. Rimasowskis' greed eventually caught up with him, and he was noticed by the companies who reported him to the FBI, leading to his arrest in Lithuania. He was subsequently sentenced to five years in jail. Unfortunately, his associates who were involved in the crime were never found. Rimasowskis would transfer the stolen funds around the world as soon as he received them, making it difficult to trace who else was involved and how much money they received. The question that arises from the incident is how Rimasowskis was able to deceive the smartest companies in the world and get away with it for years. Moreover, what does this mean for the security of the data we store on these platforms? Rimasowskis' story highlights the vulnerability of even the most sophisticated security system to email phishing schemes. These scams involve sending fraudulent emails that trick recipients into disclosing sensitive information such as passwords or bank account details. It's not surprising that Rimasowskis' case raised concerns about data security and privacy. It is critical for companies to ensure their employees are trained to identify phishing scams and take measures to prevent them. The story of Avaldis Rimasowski can be traced to Lithuania in the early 2010s. While Lithuania is home to mostly law-abiding citizens and rich culture, the country is unfortunately infamous for car theft. With the increased risk of getting caught, Rimasowskis needed a new strategy that was less risky and less likely to attract police attention. Car theft was not only risky, but it also was not very profitable, considering the amount of effort and the number of parts needed to make a significant amount of money. For instance, to earn a million dollars by selling each car part for an average of $500, a thief would need to sell 2,000 car parts. Rimasowski needed a new plan, and he found it in email phishing scams. He realized that even the smartest companies would fall prey to email scams that trick people into revealing sensitive information. Rimasowski's plan involved creating fake email accounts that appeared to be from legitimate vendors or suppliers of Google and Facebook. He would then send these emails to the company's accounting departments, requesting payment for services of goods that they had never received. The companies would unknowingly transfer the requested funds to Rimasowski's accounts, and he would quickly transfer the money to various accounts around the world, making it difficult to trace. Rimasowski's story highlights the importance of vigilance when it comes to data security and the need for individuals and organizations to take measures to prevent phishing scams. Rimasowski realized that he could make a lot of money without the victim even noticing. Tech companies were the perfect target, but he wasn't the first or last person to think of this idea. Cybersecurity is a top priority for these companies, and they invest billions into protecting their systems against cyber threats. But Ovaldis wasn't planning on hacking into their systems directly. Instead, he looked for a weaker entry point some place where money was already exiting the company. He identified the payroll department as the vulnerable spot, as paying employees and businesses is usually the biggest expense for companies like Google and Facebook. Paying employees is streamlined and highly scrutinized process, but paying businesses is often handled on a case-by-case -case basis, making it a great entry point for Evaldus. By posing as a business, he only needed to trick the handful of people who approved a given invoice not the entire IT department or security infrastructure of the company. And with that, Avaldis had his entry point to steal millions of dollars from tech companies. Avaldis Rimasowskis devised a plan to target tech companies such as Google and Facebook, who pay out billions of dollars to numerous partners for a variety of services such as manufacturing, logistics, and research. Avaldis posed as a well-known partner, Quanta Computer, which is a Taiwanese manufacturer specializing in enterprise hardware such as servers. Quantum works with almost every big tech company including Apple, Dell, HP, Amazon, Cisco, LG, Sony, and Microsoft and generates revenue of over $40 billion and a profit of $1.5 billion annually. To carry out the plan, Avaldis created fake invoices and contracts under the name of Quanta's lenders and signed them. He then sent these documents to Google and Facebook from a Quantum domain email address. The companies, like many established partners, typically approve the invoices without much scrutiny. 
The tactic was similar to those used by scammers who target unsuspecting individuals with fraudulent emails pretending to be from reputable companies like Apple and Amazon. By posing as reputable and established partner, Avaldis was able to bypass the high security IT departments of Google and Facebook and instead target the payroll departments, which are responsible for approving invoices from external partners. In this way, he was able to siphon off millions of dollars from the companies without arousing suspicion for several years. Despite the numerous articles that these companies put out to help identify and prevent phishing scams, their staff still fell victim to Avaldis scam multiple times. It's surprising that with all the resources available, they did not exercise better judgment. Avaldis did not charge Google and Facebook millions of dollars in one go. Rather, he sent multi-million dollar invoices on a regular basis. Assuming each invoice was between four and five million dollars, Avaldis trolled Google five times and Facebook a staggering 20 times, which goes to show their extent of their negligence. One would expect established companies like Google and Facebook to have payment systems in place and to be more careful with their finances. If they accidentally made an unnecessary payment, they should be able to recover it from the real company without any problems. However, they sent tens of millions of dollars to random Latvian bank accounts, which were detailed in the invoices. It was difficult to defend Avaldis, but these companies are also at fault due to their negligence. Avaldis knew how to hide the money he acquired. He would immediately transfer the funds to bank accounts in different parts of the world, including Latvia, Cyprus, Slovakia, Lithuania, Hungary, and Hong Kong. However, he did not take sufficient measures to protect his own freedom. He could have moved on to non-extraditing country like the United Arab Emirates, where he could have enjoyed his wealth without worrying about extradition. Nevertheless, he chose to stay in Lithuania, probably feeling safe behind his computer screen, thinking that as long as the money was dispersed and untraceable, he was in the clear. But that was his grave mistake. When Google and Facebook noticed some discrepancies in their accounting, they identified the fraudulent charges and immediately notified the FBI. The FBI then easily tracked down Avaldis and arrested him. With no defense against the charges, Avaldis pleaded guilty and was eventually sentenced to five years in prison. Although he had spread the money across the world, it did not protect him from being caught. Avaldis forfeited $49 million of stolen funds and was ordered to pay $27 million in restitution. Facebook and Google claimed victory as they were able to recover the majority of the funds, at least on paper. However, it's unclear if Avaldis has paid the restitution yet, or if he ever will. This leaves $44 to $71 million worth of stolen funds unaccounted for. Despite the large amount of money still missing, it's unlikely that Google or Facebook will make much effort to recover it. For Google, the total stolen funds only represent 3.5 hours of profit, and for Facebook, they represent only 37 hours of profit. Therefore, catching Avaldis and putting him behind bars was more about the principle and making a statement than actually recovering the funds. These companies do not see the value in spending more effort on recovering the remaining funds. After Avaldis is released from prison around the end of 2024, he may very well have a fortune to return to. However, this raises the question of how he was able to successfully scam companies as large and influential as Google and Facebook. Despite the embarrassing incident, it's important to note that their IT and cybersecurity systems are still as strong and secure as ever. The incident was a result of gross negligence and oversight rather than a flaw in their security measures. However, the fact that these companies were unaware of such an obvious scam is truly concerning. It's possible that they may have become complacent and over-reliant on their systems and failed to adequately train and educate their staff on the risks of phishing scams. It's actually shocking to think that an individual with limited skills and resources from Lithuania could successfully deceive Google and Facebook. The culprit took advantage of the company's vulnerabilities, and he could have potentially escaped punishment if he had acted more carefully. However, who's to say that he didn't come out at top on the end? It's likely that many people would gladly accept a five-year jail sentence for 40 to 70 million dollars in the prestige of scamming two of the world's biggest companies. This is the story of the man who managed to steal 120 million from Google and Facebook, nearly escaping unscathed. That was all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, do like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more astounding videos. Till then, be safe and be alert.